the inspection, testing the seats and listening to the engine. It was generally agreed that the club had made a good bargain and had created history within the ranks of the GEA by being the first GEA club in Ireland to own a bus. Castlevellan continued to set the pace in the All County League A race, with the title in the balance right up to the end between themselves and Glen, similar to 1954 when Glen claimed the title by two points. However, in the last league game of the season in the Meadow, played before a huge crowd, the town made amends for the previous season when they had a comprehensive win over Glen by 2-7 to 1-4 to win the club's second all-county league title, the previous one in 1935. The 1950s was also a most successful period for the club underage teams, winning the East Down Under-16 Championship title on three occasions, 1952, 53, 55, under the watchful eyes of local school teachers and senior club players, Cyril Wales, Don Rooney and Paddy O'Donoghue. The under-18 minor team had been beaten two championship finals in 1950 and 1953, but they went one step further in 1957 when they won the club's first down minor football championship title when they beat Glen comprehensively in the final with Dermot Chum McCabe as team cap. In 1958, the senior football team emulated the feat of the 1950 team. First, they captured the club's seventh fish sevens title with the team captain Pat Rice putting the shackles on Billy Kilner's danger man, Paddy Doherty, in the final. In the senior championship, Castle Wellen had overcome Kilwarland, Murray Mitchells and Glen in the semi-final to advance to the final to meet the holders Glondorf. With a mixture of experience and youth, Paddy McAleenan, Jim Jennings and Pat Rooney from the 1950 team and seven members of the 1957 minor championship winning team, Oliver Brannigan, Dennis Kearney, Dermot McCabe, James McCartan, Hugh McAllister, James McKinney and Frankie Rooney. The town won the club's fifth senior football championship title. Towards the end of the year, Castlewell was striving for that unique treble. Having already captured the senior phase sevens and senior championship, they were still in contention for the A-League title. However, in what was described as a league decider in their home game against the league leaders Glen, Lady Luck deserted them on the occasion missing several close-in frees, plus a penalty kick, going down by four points. Castlewell, not seven, Glen 2-5, and had to be content with runners-up spot in the league. The year 1956 marked the debut on the inter-county scene for Pat Rice, who would later claim the ultimate glory as the first Castlewell man to win a Sam Maguire medal. His first game in the red and black was in April 1956, in a challenge game against Carlo, in which Down won 3-5 three, three, to 2-7, a team that contained, along with Pat, eight other players who had great history in 1960. The first senior breakthrough came in 1958, when Down defeated Donegal and Tyrone, before falling in the Ulster final to Derry, with Pat Rice starring for Down on that occasion. The following year, 1959, Down defeated Derry, qualify for a Whitson weekend clash against Galway at Wembley Stadium London. and Pat Rice won his first Wembley Tournament Cup before 32,000 spectators. Later in the year Pat was left full back on the down team that captured the Anglo Celt Cup beating Cavan at Clonus in the Ulster final on a scoreline 216 to not 7 winning down its first senior football championship title but unfortunately were beaten in the All-Ireland semi-final by Galway in Cook Park, with Pat Rice now the first Castlewell man to win an Ulster senior football medal. In 1960, the down uh, machine was truly in action, but there was a price to be paid. The senior club scene curtailed to the bare minimum the town were beaten in the first round of the senior championship by Ballykindler and with only a handful of games having been played in the senior league, the county committee decided to abandon the league. When Down retained their Ulster senior championship title, they then overcome awfully in a replay to reach the All-Ireland final for the very first time. 
and their opponents in the final would be the famed Kingdom of Kerry. Then, on Sunday, September the 25th, 1960, at about 5 p.m., Croke Park witnessed incredible scenes of excitement and enthusiasm as tens of thousands of jubilant Down supporters came rushing down onto the pitch to acclaim Down the all Ireland Senior Football Champions. There were tremendous scenes on Monday on the way home from Dublin for the historic team. Then the team moved eastwards to Castle Wallen where the band led a torchlight procession to the platform where Reverend C.J. Crossan, parish priest, was joined by the Reverend F. Warren Church of Ireland, Reverend J. Bridget Presbyterian Church and the Honourable Gerald Ansley in a warm ecumenical tribute to the team. This remarkable feat was repeated in 61 and on this occasion another piece of history was created when Down played awfully in the All-Ireland Final in front of 90,556 spectators. A record for a sporting occasion in Ireland which stands to this day. From the early 1950s, Pat Rooney was steadily earning himself a reputation as one of the leading referees in the country. And while still a player, he had taken charge of five Down Senior Football Championship finals in 1954, 55, 59, 60 and 61. In 1960, Pat was appointed as referee in charge of the University Sigerson Cup Games in Belfast, even though Castle Wallen men James McKinney left half-back and Dennis Kearney full-back were both starting for Queen's University. At this time, Pat was carving out such a fine reputation as a top-class referee and he brought further honour and glory to the Castle Wallen Club by its appointment as a referee for the 1961 minor All-Ireland Football Final, Cork vs Mayo. At that time, Pat Rooney was acknowledged as one of the best referees in Down and Ulster. With promotion gained, there was to be no mistake the following year. Losing only one match in the 14-game programme to capture the club's third All-County Senior League, the previous title in 1935 and 1955, with Mac McInerney, the proud team captain. In 1965, Pat Rice was back again as club captain and Galway man George Glynn, now teaching in St Malagy's, had joined the ranks, with George helping down to win the Ulster Senior Championship in July. However, it was later in the year, with these two great men as a midfield partnership, the town advanced to the championship final with victories over Glen, Tramara, Dunsford and Rostraver to clash once again with Clinduff. On final day with goals from Cum Isaac McAllister, Pat Small and Dermot Ginger Jennings, the town turned in a tremendous performance to capture the club's sixth down senior football championship title and finished in third spot in the A-League. The 60s were also a golden period for underage teams with the under-16 schoolboy team winning the league and championship in 1963 and adding two further league titles in 1966 and 68. However, it was the under-18 minor teams who were setting new records for the club. The 1965 team reached the county final but were beaten on that occasion by Newry Shamrocks. But with a lot of the same players available, the next year, 1966, they proceeded to capture the club's second down minor football championship title when they beat Tully Leash in the final, 1-10 to no score. With Jerry Doherty, the proud team captain, and they completed the double when they added the minor league title. Then, two years later, in 1968, with seven of the 1966 panels still available and captained on this occasion by Pascal Bowden, the minor team won the championship for the third time in the club's history. In 1968, Castle Wallen's Paddy O'Donoghue was re-elected as the county chairman for the second year, and what a year it would prove for his leadership. Down had a magnificent league campaign and deservedly recaptured the National Football League title, beating Kildare 2-14 to 2-11 in the final. They then followed this with wins over Derry, Donegal and Cavan in the final to regain the Anglo-Celt Cup. 
Next up were Galway in the semi-final and Kerry in the final to win the county's third All Ireland Senior Football Championship title. Colin McAlarney claimed the Man of the Match award in the final, giving notice of greatness to come. And George Glynn, who had played a key defensive role in the semi final, came on as a substitute at midfield in the final. Liam Sloan was also a member of the successful panel. Mick Dunn of RTE said a team on the sideline as well as on the playing pitch. Three of the six were Castle Well men who pioneered and planned this success Paddy O'Donoghue, County Chairman, Dan Rooney, Selector and Des Farley, who was the team trainer. At the end of the 1969 season, Dan Rooney decided to step down as club secretary, a position he had held with such distinction for 23 years. And during such time, he had helped to pioneer so many of Castle Vallon Club's successes, both on and off the field, as well as establishing himself as one of the leading GAA officials within the county into the bridge stepped a young, enthusiastic Jerry Dougherty to become the new secretary, a position he would hold for the next 25 years. This was a very successful decade for the club, both on and off the pitch. The team started the decade in the second division uh, and a new energetic committee took over with a view to developing uh, the club, all aspects of the club. The uh, priorities were returning to the first division and the provision of permanent playing facilities. The first priority was achieved in 1974 when the senior team captained by Pat McPhillips captured the all-county B League title, thus ensuring a return to division A League status for the first time in four years. A presentation function to celebrate this achievement was held in the Oak Grill. The ambitious plans drawn up incorporating youth facilities etc were proven to be too costly and it became clear that a steady source of financial income was necessary in order to proceed with the development work. The committee decided to approach the parish to sell the old bus depot at the top of the meadow with a view to converting it into a licensed social club. The parish priest, Father McNabb, was somewhat reluctant at first However, his curate father, McStravick, using his usual persuasive talents, secured the premises for the club at a cost of £4,000. Immediately, the wheels were set in motion to obtain planning permission and a registered licence. Voluntary helpers worked hard to convert the derelict building into the first GAA social club in Down, and it officially opened its doors for the first time in February 1976. In 1934, the Fish Committee had introduced Sevens football to the programme for the first time and the town were the proud winners on that first occasion. And again in 1976 when they introduced minor Sevens football to the programme, it was once again Castle Allen who were the first winners of the new competition. In 1977, Colin McAlerney, who was by then a household name throughout Ireland and was affectionately known as Arkle, having got married had moved and was now living in Castle Allen. He decided to transfer to Castle Allen and what was Leitrim's loss became a huge gain for Castle Allen. The enormous contribution that Colin McAlerney has made not only to Castle Allen teams but to the club in general is immeasurable. Around the same time a number of other players such as Barney McAleenan, Leo Flanagan, Kevin McElroy and Sean Gallagher joined the club and made considerable contribution to the success of the teams throughout the decade. The official opening of Somalagis Park in 1978 was a very memorable occasion. On a glorious sunny day with approximately 8,000 spectators in attendance, down the then Ulster champions, played Kerry, who at the time were the champions of Munster and were later to become the All-Ireland champions. Castle Allen played the Ulster club champions St John's of Antrim in the curtain raiser with Pat Rooney and the late Georgie Cairns as referees. Prior to the date, a few hiccups had been encountered with the participation of Kerry in some doubt. However, Father McStravick and Pat Rice were dispatched to Kerry where they met famous Joe Cahan and Joe promised that Kerry would travel and sure enough, Joe was true to his word. Most clubs would be satisfied with one major achievement in the year, but not here in Castle Allen, because on Saturday the 23rd of September 1978, the club achieved the second